Hello, and welcome to the next episode of This Crazy Up in This House, as we celebrate our children's birthday. <laughs> so, 11, huh? Mm -hmm. How does it feel to be old? What you gonna do in your old age? <laughs> How do you even do that? My camera keeps glitching. I think we scared it. I always love dating. Oh, can I fix my hair? Don't be rude. Yep, I always love date day. <laughs> Romanian rubbernecking. Well, now we've got an ambulance coming up. Got an ambulance coming up. Crazy summer traffic. It's an accident. It's not the traffic. Not ever did it, ambulance. Everybody else got smart, got behind him. We never said we were smart, huh, baby? We're redneck. <laughs> so all of this was caused... Yeah, now the rubbernecking part is over. We can move on. Yeah. There was an accident back there. There was an accident back there. And you only thought Americans were rubberneckers. <laughs> nope. They like to uh, be nosy and see, too. Yep. Our, that side is because of the accident. Our this side's side, not moving. It wasn't moving This earlier. side was just gawkers. Everybody wanted to look and see what was happening over there. Because this is what we do on date night when we old. What are you doing? What? <laughs> we go shopping for kids' chicken nuggets. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Us Craziness over here. There are some things that you hold on to whenever you move to a different culture and some things that you let go of. And so we allow our kids on their birthdays to tell us what they would like and if it's something from America, if we can provide it, we try to be able to do that. Of course, we live on a much smaller budget than we did in America. So um, a lot of things we uh, have to make ourselves. And so our kids like American birthday cakes. Um, they like uh, our son today has a chocolate chip cookie cake. So those are a thing in America, at least in Texas they are, um, where it's like a big sheet of cookie, one solid cookie, and you frost it and decorate it. And so I try to provide that for them if that's what they want. But since it's so hot, the only way I can do that right now is to turn that oven on it has to be early in the morning before it hits like 85, 86, 87, 88, 89 degrees in this house. So that's what I'm doing today. So if you'd like, pardon the construction, boop, 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 that stuff. I am moving around some pictures and so I replastered holes in the wall so we can move some things around. So if you'll excuse that, the rest of this will be a piece of cake. <laughs> overseas ingredients are just a little bit different um, I'll give you a for instance here brown sugar in the States is um, sugar that they have taken this I don't know what they call it out of it the brown stuff out of it and then it becomes a white sugar and then if they add it back in which is where they get molasses from it's that brown stuff they take out of the sugar pardon me I'm not a scientist I don't know the name I'm just a mom 
<laughs> but whenever they add the brown stuff back in, in the States, they call that brown sugar. That's why it's sticky, because it has that molasses in it. It's like white sugar with molasses added to it. So here, if you get brown sugar, it's just the sugar before they process it. And so it's granulated. So it's a little bit different, cooks a little bit different. And uh, so there's a lot of ingredients like that overseas that you have to become accustomed to. And that's just a process of learning it whenever you move overseas. Um, here, it's very difficult to find salted butter. And so here's a nice little tip because a lot of countries don't sell salted butter like we do in the States. Um, or you have to pay an extreme amount of money for it because it's imported like it is here. You can buy it, it's just very expensive. Um, so here's a cool little note. For every cup of unsalted butter, you add one fourth, excuse me, for every half cup of butter. Let me get this straight, don't, don't wanna lead you wrong. For every half cup of butter that you add that's unsalted, you can add a fourth teaspoon of salt to it and it will make it salted butter. So you can just add the fourth teaspoon, as you can see there, this, of salt to your recipe for every half cup of butter that you add and it will make it taste the same. So a lot of times overseas though, the butter tastes a whole lot better than it does here. Another fun thing whenever you move overseas is learning the names of things because that has that I have been studying Romanian for let's see I really really started studying in March of this year uh, but by the time I started studying we had already lived here for a half a year and um, I knew most food words that we buy on a regular basis, I already knew from Google Translate or from studying through Duolingo. Duolingo is a good resource if you um, haven't checked that out. Check that out because it will help you get started in a new language. And um, it is great to have a friend that speaks that language. So we have a language teacher and she's a good friend of ours. And so they can explain. It's very difficult to learn a language if you can't connect it to the culture. And so she explains a lot of the cultural background behind it and that helps us learn the language a lot. That has helped us grow in our language skills at a massive pace because when they explain the culture behind it, why they say that, they can explain idioms to you. Um, idioms, if you don't know what that is, we have those in English. It's when you say something, but it means something different. For instance, um, if you say, oh wow, I put my foot in my mouth. Um, it doesn't mean that you literally picked your foot up and poked it in your mouth hole. <laughs> it means you said something dumb or you said something that made you look foolish or something that embarrassed yourself, something like that. Um, that's an idiom. They have those in every language. So you have to learn those and that's a part of learning the culture as well as the language. So. Here's another fun little tip that may help you whenever you're moving overseas. Um, you'll notice that in a lot of countries, they don't do foods in the same measurements when they sell them as in America because we use a different measuring system. So you'll see, uh, for instance, flour sold like this by two kilograms. This is, in America, we would sell this as, you know, a two pound bag of flour or five pounds. They don't do pounds here, they do kilograms. Uh, one kilogram is 2.2 .2 pounds. So that would be a two pound bag of flour in the States, but it's, excuse me, four pound bag of flour in the States, but we don't have that. It's like five pounds or two pounds. So here, um, a lot of times the measurements will be in uh, grams or ounces. I think ounces is more America, but um, my point is this. Um, if you have something that's like, you need a cup of butter, well, butter doesn't come in a cup like in the States, and it doesn't come marked. It comes in a block, and I'll, give, I'll show you. Butter comes in just a block like this, and so it comes 200 grams, which is just short of a cup. So instead of me melting this and getting it mashed into a cup, 
it's a whole lot easier to just learn how many grams is in a cup. So you can actually say, hey Google, what is um, one cup of butter in grams? And it'll tell you that it's 225 grams. So this is a little short of a cup. So one thing that's easier to do instead of just mashing this into a cup is, okay, now I know I need 225 grams. So now I know I need two blocks to be able to have enough butter for my recipe. And then you get a cool little food scale. And if you get one from the States, this one is an old Weight Watcher scale. I don't even think they have these anymore, but I've had it for a very long time. But it, it you can switch it from grams to ounces. You can, whichever one you want. But since we want 225 grams, we would we, we don't need to weigh this because we know that this is 200 grams. But then you get another block and you just start, put a plate on here, just start chunking off the pieces of butter until it hits 25 grams. And then you're like, okay, cool, I've got a cup now. And you don't have to mash it all into that cup. It's a whole lot easier to do that by the weight like they do here than it is to mash it into a cup and figure it out. The only thing that makes it easier in the States is all these have these little lines marked on it that tell you, though this is two tablespoons, well, they don't have that here. So it's a lot easier to go by the weight like they do here than it is to try and measure it all out, at least in my opinion. So that might be easier for you too. And if you need one that has ounces, you might want to bring it from the States. So here, uh, chocolate chip cookies is really more of an American thing. Actually, I think like homemade cookies is kind of like an American thing. I know in England they have biscuits, which here they call them bis biscuits. Um, it's like those, you know, crunchy crackery kind of cookies, kind of like animal crackers in America. Um, but homemade cookies are a foreign thing to them. And so since today I'm making a chocolate chip cookie cake, um, you can't just buy chocolate chips in the, in the stores here. So the quick, easy solution is to find, and this is the fun part, you get to go through all the candy bars and find the one that tastes most like chocolate chips. So here I use, um, it's a Poyana, which is made here in Romania, and I use the Amare, which is bitter chocolate, but it's also sweet, and then you just crunch the bar up. I don't bang it and crunch it. I actually go down, try to make them as uniformed size as possible, so it tastes, I guess, kind of like chocolate chunk cookies in America. So that's about the size that I cut mine. That one's a little big, actually. I usually try to cut about that size, if you can tell by my hand. So that's, that's the fun part, is taste testing the chocolate bars to find the closest to semi-sweet that you can find. chocolate to melt so I cut it up yesterday one bar at a time putting them in a baggie in the freezer to make sure they didn't melt before I am ready to cook them in the oven so all right now I think this is about ready to mash into a pan to cook in the states we use Fahrenheit um, in Europe and I'm pretty sure the rest of the world they use Celsius so I'm not for sure why we still use Fahrenheit in America um, but to be able to switch it over is really simple a lot of people bring um, the little thermometers that they can hang in the oven that has Fahrenheit and Celsius on it so that way they don't have to like change it but it's really simple in the world that we live in today you can just ask Google can you change uh, you know, this in Fahrenheit, 375 in Fahrenheit to Celsius, and it'll say 190 in Celsius. And so then you can just set your oven. And then I usually write it in my recipe book. Um, I have my own special recipe book. This is um, recipes that I have created or gathered over the years throughout my entire lifetime. And one day, I will leave this to my children. So these are recipes of things that I have made 
uh, throughout my children's lifetimes and special occasions, all kinds of stuff like that. That kind of stuff is important. A lot of times food is related to special holidays or birthdays or celebrations. And so a lot of times I will repeat recipes that I used in the States or um, even uh, it was a big deal for my family to go to the State Fair of Texas every year with my family. And so for that, while they're there, so we're not sad that we're not there with them, I will make special foods like fried hot dogs. You do not fry hot dogs. I don't know, maybe you do, but corn dogs, fried corn dogs, and uh, special things like that, roasted corn, funnel cakes, things that we would eat at the State Fair of Texas. So that way, in a way, we kind of feel like we're still with them. And the great world that we live in today, you can still video chat with them, and that's a great thing because it keeps you close to your family. As they grow, you don't feel like you lose track. You still stay in touch and uh, they can always come and visit. Hey, as I was making this video, I realized it was getting a little too long. So I decided to cut this into two videos. So I hope you'll join us for our next video where we'll work on the buttercream frosting for our cake, the final product, and you'll even get to see our son enjoy his birthday cookie cake. So I hope you'll join us in our next video. I'll see you next time. How do you do that with your face? <gasps> what if your face froze like that? And you're just walking around going, I love it. You're the best girl, man. <laughs> and they were like, are you speaking in English or Romanian? I said that. Thank you.